Okay, let's start. After saying hello, President Obama thanks the young woman who introduced him. Hi, everybody. Anaya, thank you for that beautiful introduction. I could not be prouder of everything you've done in your time with the Obama Foundation. Reference. The Obama Foundation is a non-profit organization that was created in 2017. And, of course, I couldn't be prouder of all of you in the graduating class of 2020. Sometimes Obama uses contractions. I couldn't be prouder. Sometimes he does not use contractions. I could not be prouder. It just depends on the moment. I could not be prouder. I couldn't be prouder of all of you in the graduating class of 2020, as well as the teachers and the coaches. In the U.S. school system, coaches of school sports teams are important, and so he references them here also. As well as the teachers and the coaches, and most of all, parents and family who guided you along the way. To guide somebody along the way means to show, teach, or help somebody as time passes. In this case, to help the students grow up. Now, graduating is a big achievement under any circumstances. An achievement is a goal or target that you arrive to, that you reach. A big achievement. A big achievement. A big achievement under any circumstances. Under any circumstances means at any time. He means that even in normal times, finishing high school is a big event, a big achievement. Indirectly, he is referencing that we are not living in normal times in 2020. Some of you have had to overcome serious obstacles along the way. You've had is a contraction of you have had. If you are studying grammar, this is called the present perfect. It's spoken very fast here. Some of you have had to overcome serious obstacles along the way. To overcome an obstacle means to move over or get around a difficult situation. You can overcome something physically, but he doesn't mean this physically. He means to get over a difficult situation. He gives us three examples. To overcome serious obstacles along the way, whether it was an illness or a parent losing a job or living in a neighborhood where people too often count you out. So our three examples of obstacles are an illness, a parent losing a job, and living in an area where people count you out. To be counted out is from a phrasal verb that means people don't believe in you. When they make a list of people that they think will win or do well, they do not count you. So they count you out. Whether it was an illness or a parent losing a job or living in a neighborhood where people too often count you out. By the way, many good speakers and Obama is a good speaker, use something called the rule of three. When they give you examples or make points, they give you three. It's easy to remember, it sounds good, and it's something that President Obama uses often. Along with the usual challenges of growing up, all of you have had to deal with the added pressures of social media, reports of school shootings, and the specter of climate change. Again, we have three examples, the rule of three. All of these are references that these teenagers have experienced. Social media, school shootings, and climate change. The specter of climate change. And the specter of climate change. A specter is a ghost. Here, it means the unseen dangers or threat of climate change and the specter of climate change. And then, just as you're about to celebrate having made it through, to make it through means to succeed, to exit the other side of something, to finish a long or difficult period. He means finishing high school. And then, just as you're about to celebrate having made it through, just as you've been looking forward to proms and senior nights, Okay, to look forward to is a phrasal verb that describes feeling happy 
or excited for something. Students in the final year of high school have many things they look forward to. One of them is the prom. This is a special formal dance that is only for the older students in the high school. It's a very big event for many American teenagers. You probably have seen it in films or TV shows. Senior nights are other types of events that happen in the final year of school. Just as you've been looking forward to proms and senior nights, graduation ceremonies, and let's face it, a whole bunch of parties. Let's face it is an expression that means let's be honest. Let's face it. Let's face it. Let's face it. A whole bunch of means a lot of or many. A whole bunch of parties. You can hear an effect of speed here where bunch of sounds like Buncha, buncha. A whole bunch of parties. A whole bunch of parties. This is a reduction, and we will hear more of them in a moment. Just as you've been looking forward to proms and senior nights, graduation ceremonies, and let's face it, a whole bunch of parties, the world is turned upside down by a global pandemic. Upside down. That means inverted flipped. If the world is turned upside down, it means the world is changed completely in a shocking or dramatic way. The world is turned upside down by a global pandemic. And as much as I'm sure you love your parents, I'll bet that being stuck at home with them and playing board games or watching Tiger King on TV is not exactly how you envisioned the last few months of your senior year. This wasn't easy. It's a great example of spoken English. And as much as I'm sure you love your parents, I'll bet that being stuck at home with them... I'll bet that means I'm sure that. I'll bet that you want to learn more vocabulary. I'm sure that you want to learn more vocabulary. Okay, to be stuck at home means to be blocked at home. If you are stuck somewhere, you cannot leave. I'll bet that being stuck at home with them. We have two reductions here, as Obama speaks a little faster. So being becomes being. That's really normal in spoken English. We lose the final G of ing. Being, being. With them becomes with them. Listen for the reductions. I'll bet that being stuck at home with them. And playing board games or watching Tiger King on TV. Board games are games we play at home with family members. Tiger King is a pop culture reference. It's a documentary series on the streaming service Netflix that is popular at the moment. If somebody is listening to this speech in 20 years, they will have no idea what this reference means. References can make you feel part of the in group when you know what they mean, but they can also exclude you or make you feel outside of the group when you don't know what they mean. As this is a message for the class of 2020, this reference fits very well. Watching Tiger King on TV is not exactly how you envisioned the last few months of your senior year. Envisioned. 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 This means something like imagined. So, this is not exactly how you imagined the last few months of your senior year. Remember, this is a time period young Americans are typically excited about. It's not exactly how you envisioned the last few months of your senior year. Now, I'll be honest with you. The disappointments of missing a live graduation, those will pass pretty quick. I don't remember much of my own high school graduation. I know that not having to sit there and listen to a commencement speaker... A commencement speaker. Remember, these are the people who stand in front of the class and give speeches at the graduation ceremony. These are normally between 15 and 20 minutes long. I know that not having to sit there and listen to a commencement speaker isn't all that bad. Mine usually go on way too long. Obama is trying to say, don't be sad, you're not missing much. He also makes a little joke about himself speaking too much or speaking too long. Also, not that many people look great in those caps. 
especially if you have big ears like me. Those caps are a reference to graduation caps. Again, we have a little joke where Obama makes fun of himself. This fits with his style. And you'll have plenty of time to catch up with your friends once the immediate public health crisis is over. Plenty of time means more than enough time. You'll have plenty of time to catch up with your friends. To catch up with somebody is a phrasal verb. It means to speak with and update each other on what has happened since you last met. But what remains true is that your graduation marks your passage into adulthood. The time when you begin to take charge of your own life. To take charge of means to take control of. To become the boss of your own life. When you begin to take charge of your own life, it's when you get to decide what's important to you. You sounds like ya here. Ya. You get to decide what's important to you. The kind of career you want to pursue. Who you want to build a family with. The values you want to live by. Did you notice that? We had three examples. Also note how Obama reduces want to to wanna. Want to becomes wanna. It's when you get to decide what's important to you. The kind of career you want to pursue. Who you want to build a family with. The values you want to live by. And given the current state of the world, that may be kind of scary. Another normal spoken English reduction, kind of, becomes kinda, kinda, kinda scary. Kinda scary. This expression means that the current situation in the world can make you feel a little afraid. If you'd planned on going away for college, getting dropped off at campus in the fall. You'd planned is the contraction of you had planned. For those of you studying grammar, this is a conditional form. We have two other verbs here that could be confusing. To go away for college means to leave your parents' house and to transfer or to move to a new apartment or house at your university. To get dropped off is when somebody brings you somewhere and then leaves you there, like a taxi or a bus. Both college and fall are American words. There are many in this speech, but I will just highlight these two as examples. College is university. Fall is the autumn season. If you'd planned on going away for college, getting dropped off at campus in the fall, that's no longer a given. This means it's not for sure anymore. If you are planning to work while going to school, finding that first job is going to be tougher. 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 Tougher means more difficult. We also see going to here. We use going to to speak about the future when we want to give the impression that things are for sure. So Obama is not saying that things may be more difficult, but they are going to be more difficult. It's for sure. Finding that first job is going to be tougher. Even families that are relatively well-off are dealing with massive uncertainty. Well-off is a nice way to say rich, without money problems. Those who were struggling before, they're hanging on by a thread. Okay, this is a great example of spoken English. First, vocabulary. To struggle means to fight or have difficulty or problems. Here, it means to have financial problems. So the people who were having financial problems before, they are hanging on by a thread. Do you know this idiom? Maybe not. A thread is a piece of fabric or a string. To hang on means that you are about to fall, but that your hands are holding on to something. So if you are in a very dangerous situation, you are hanging on by a thread. When speaking about money, this means that you are only just surviving. Those who were struggling before, they're hanging on by a thread. We also have a reduction here, where the ing becomes in, hanging. Using this makes this sound even better, because it sounds more authentic. Those who were struggling before, they're hanging on by a thread. All of which means that 
you're gonna have to grow up faster than some generations. Going to becomes gonna. Have to becomes have to. Have to. All of which means that you're gonna have to grow up faster than some generations. This pandemic has shaken up the status quo and laid bare a lot of our country's deep-seated problems. To shake up means to disrupt or disturb. The status quo is Latin and means the existing state or the current normal way of things. So the sentence means the pandemic has changed the normal way of doing things. This pandemic has shaken up the status quo and laid bare a lot of our country's deep-seated problems. To lay bare means to show something that was hidden. Deep-seated is a high-level adjective that means firmly established, fixed in place. Obama is saying that this pandemic has changed the normal way of doing things and has shown the country's problems. He now gives us examples. Three examples. From massive economic inequality, to ongoing racial disparities, to a lack of basic health care for people who need it. Our three examples are, one, big economic inequality, two, continuing racial differences and unfairness, three, missing health care for many people. It's not easy to see, but watch his hands when he gives the three points. We have one hand, the second hand, and then both hands. From massive economic inequality, to ongoing racial disparities, to a lack of basic health care for people who need it. It's woken a lot of young people up to the fact that the old ways of doing things just don't work. We lost another G from ing. Doing, doing, doing. Doing things, the old ways of doing things just don't work. That it doesn't matter how much money you make if everyone around you is hungry and sick. Doesn't matter means it's not important. And that our society and our democracy only work when we think not just about ourselves, but about each other. It's also pulled the curtain back on another hard truth. In idiom, to pull the curtain back means to show, to reveal. Think of a big red curtain in a theater that is closed, so we can't see anything. And then we open the curtain to reveal something, to show. It's also pulled the curtain back on another hard truth. Something that we all have to eventually accept once our childhood comes to an end. You know, all those adults that you used to think were in charge and knew what they were doing? Turns out they don't have all the answers. To turn out, that's a phrasal verb. It means to happen or to prove to be. In this expression, it means you thought adults had all the answers? Well, guess what? The reality is that they do not. It turns out that they do not know everything. It turns out they don't have all the answers. A lot of them aren't even asking the right questions. So if the world's going to get better, it's going to be up to you. Our going to's change to gonna. Gonna be up to you means it depends on you. It's your responsibility. If the world's going to get better, it's going to be up to you. That realization may be kind of intimidating, but I hope it's also inspiring. Something about President Obama's style in this speech. Did you notice that he gives long pauses between points? I'm sure he is doing this for dramatic effect. He is giving his listener time to think and reflect on his words. With all the challenges this country faces right now, Nobody can tell you, no, you're too young to understand, or this is how it's always been done. This faces means confronted with, or simply has. With all the challenges this country has at the moment, nobody can tell you. And then we have an imitation of an old person speaking. With all the challenges this country faces right now, nobody can tell you, 
no, you're too young to understand, or this is how it's always been done. Because with so much uncertainty, with everything suddenly up for grabs, this is your generation's world to shape. We have an idiom here that is probably new for many of you. To be up for grabs means that something is completely unsure. To grab something is to take it into your hands. You can grab a pen. You can grab scissors. To be up for grabs means that something is up in the air and it's available for anybody to take. Anybody can grab it. So it's unsure who will take it. In this sentence, Obama means the future is unknown. And so it's your generation's world to form, to shape. Because with so much uncertainty, with everything suddenly up for grabs, this is your generation's world to shape. Since I'm one of the old guys, I won't tell you what to do with this power that rests in your hands. But I'll leave you with three quick pieces of advice. How many pieces of advice? Three quick pieces of advice. First, don't be afraid. America's gone through tough times before. We have a contraction here for has gone. In grammar, that's the present perfect tense. Tough times, difficult times, hard times. America's gone through tough times before. Slavery, civil war, famine, disease, the Great Depression, and 9-11. We have a list of historical references here, where the U.S. experienced difficult times. And each time, we came out stronger. Usually because a new generation, young people like you, learned from past mistakes and figured out how to make things better. To figure out is a very frequent phrasal verb that means to understand or to find a solution to a problem. Second, do what you think is right. Doing what feels good, what's convenient, what's easy, that's how little kids think. Three more examples. One, what feels good. Two, what is convenient, which means comfortable or easy. Three, what is easy. Now we arrive to the piece of the speech that was on all the evening news channels. He does not reference Donald Trump by name, but many would say that he is referencing him indirectly. Unfortunately, a lot of so-called grown-ups, including some with fancy titles and important jobs, still think that way, which is why things are so screwed up. Okay, let's look at this. So-called grown-ups. A grown-up is another way to say an adult, not a child. So-called means people call it this, but the name is wrong. It's not really appropriate. So a so-called grown-up is an adult who behaves like a little child. Unfortunately, a lot of so-called grown-ups, including some with fancy titles and important jobs, still think that way. Who is he referencing here? The teachers at the school? The coaches of the football teams? It's possible. But given the background and the politics in the United States, he is probably referencing Donald Trump and Republican leaders. This channel isn't about politics. It's about spoken English. So let's continue. Which is why things are so screwed up. Screwed up. This is a very strong way to say bad, chaotic, not good. So he is saying the government response to the current crisis has been very, very bad. Which is why things are so screwed up. I hope that instead you decide to ground yourself in values that last. To ground yourself in values that last means to connect yourself, to base yourself, base your life on basic good values. He gives us some examples. To ground yourself in values that last. Like honesty, hard work, responsibility, fairness, generosity, respect for others. Now, if we believe he was speaking about Donald Trump before, then this is also a list of things that he thinks Donald Trump does not value. You can see why this received attention in the United States. You won't get it right every time. You'll make mistakes like we all do. To get something right means to be right. 
so you will not be right every time. You'll make mistakes like we all do. But if you listen to the truth that's inside yourself, even when it's hard, even when it's inconvenient. Inconvenient is uncomfortable, not easy. Even when it's inconvenient, people will notice. They'll gravitate towards you. To gravitate towards somebody means to be attracted to somebody, to want to get near to them. We also hear you change to ya. They'll gravitate towards you, and you'll be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. More reduction. It sounds like instead of part of the problem. Instead of part of the problem. And finally, build a community. No one does big things by themselves. Right now, when people are scared, it's easy to be cynical and... Cynical. Cynical. It's an adjective. If you are cynical, you believe that people are only motivated by self-interest. That they only care about themselves. And so, you have a general distrust of the honesty of other people. It's easy to be cynical and... Say, let me just look out for myself. To look out for somebody means to only care about that person. So here, to only think about myself. Say, let me just look out for myself or my family or people who look or think or pray like me. But if we're going to get through these difficult times. Remember, gonna is the reduction of going to. We'll hear it again in a moment. But if we're going to get through these difficult times. If we're going to create a world where everybody has opportunity to find a job and afford college. Afford means to be able to pay for something. To have money to pay for something. If we're going to save the environment and defeat future pandemics. Then we're going to have to do it together. This have to changes to have to. Have to. Two reductions together. Gonna have to. Then we're going to have to do it together. So be alive to one another's struggles. This all means be aware of each other's difficulties and problems. So be alive to one another's struggles. Stand up for one another's rights. To stand up for means to defend. Stand up for one another's rights. Leave behind all the old ways of thinking that divide us. Sexism, racial prejudice, status, greed. A lot of vocabulary here. Sexism is discriminating against men or women, typically against women. Racial prejudice is discriminating against somebody because of the color of their skin. Status, for example, rich versus poor. Greed, a strong wish to have money or power. Leave behind all the old ways of thinking that divide us. Sexism, racial prejudice, status, greed. And set the world on a different path. This means to change the direction of the world. When you need help, Michelle and I have made it the mission of our foundation. Michelle Obama is a reference. I imagine you know her, of course, and so don't need an introduction, but it's a good example of a reference. If for some reason you don't know who Michelle Obama is, or somebody is watching this in 100 years, this could be an obstacle to understanding. The mission of our foundation to give young people like you the skills and support to lead in your own communities and to connect you with other young leaders around the country and around the globe. Around the country means everywhere in the country. Around the country. Around the globe means everywhere in the world. And around the globe. But the truth is, you don't need us to tell you what to do. This too sounds like ta. You don't need us to tell you what to do. Because in so many ways, you've already started to lead. Congratulations, class of 2020. Keep making us proud. To keep making us proud means to continue making us proud. Keep making us proud. Okay, let me know in the comments below if you learned any new vocabulary or expressions today. And let me know if you want more long missions like this one. Our listening mission for today is finished. Mission accomplished.